Okay, hi everyone. So for today's lab, you will be following an Esri ArcGIS online tutorial. So it's called Get Started with ArcGIS Online, Create and Share an Evacuation Map to Prepare for an Incoming Hurricane. So your final results should look like this. And this is based on Houston, Texas. So again, this is this will be a walkthrough, but this tutorial is available on Canvas on module one. So again, you'll be creating a map that shows hurricane evacuation routes in Houston, Texas. And first, you will need to open ArcGIS online, so please Google search it, and sign in to your account. So sign in to ArcGIS online. And I have two screens here, one to follow, so I could follow the tutorial and doing the tutorial here. So it looks like, so this is my personal ArcGIS account, but once you log in, you will see tabs on the upper part of the screen right here since my screen is shortened it's showing up as a sidebar but it should show as tabs on the top so click map to open your map viewer so we will be working with map viewer on ArcGIS online so here we have the sidebar which is related to map making and then we have another sidebar on the right side where we could manipulate the data, mess with our symbology here, as well as analysis. So let's continue with our exercise. So here it says on the map, and again, I am skimming through this, this tutorial is available, the Word document is available online. Um, again, it's telling you the contents is the dark toolbar on the left and the settings is the light toolbar on the right. And the layers tab, we will be adding data here. So it says to search for Houston, Texas. So we will be searching for Houston, Texas here this magnifying glass. So Houston, Texas, USA. Again, you don't have to type it completely. You can just click. It will zoom in on Houston, Texas. So if you want to locate a specific place, you just need to click the search bar. So the map zooms to Houston, Texas and we're going to close the search result pop-up. We have this. Now we will be adding a layer. So it says if necessary on the context, click layer contents toolbar, click layers to display the layers pane. And in the layers pane, layers pane, click add. So we'll be adding a layer. And if we click here, I have already data downloaded, but we will follow the tutorial here in the add layer pane, click my content from the drop down menu, choose living atlas. So this is the drop down menu. I will be choosing living atlas. And it says in the search box type hurricane evacuation routes and press enter. So the living atlas, we can find 
anything that you're interested in. And this will be useful, especially for your final project. If you have a idea in mind, you could run it through the Living Atlas to see if there's available data. So again, I clicked enter, enter. This is what is popping up. For the hurricane evacuation routes layer, click the add button. So I'll be clicking add. So the map zooms out to the extent of the layer and the layer is added to the map. So we see it here. Now that I added the layer, Right now my screen is busy, so again I am going to exit off of this settings toolbar and if you click this back arrow, you will see that this layer is added, the hurricane evacuation routes layer. Again, you can mess with the data, you can turn it off and on by pressing the eye icon, but it wants us to zoom into Houston. So again, on the contents toolbar, we want to be changing, let's exit that, we want to change the base map. So go to the base map, and our current base map is topographic. It is highlighted here, but it says to change it to light gray canvas. So let's go to light gray canvas. And I up, it will update automatically. Now what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be adding a toolbar to I mean, we will, we will be adding a bookmark to Houston, Texas. So again, I'm going to exit that since we do not need the Navi, we do not need another base map. So on the contents toolbar, click bookmarks in the bookmarks pane. And we're going to click add bookmark. So Again, it zoomed us out, so let's search for Houston, Texas again. So we could be zoomed in. We're gonna exit that. And this is the bookmark that, bookmark that I want to do. So click on bookmarks, add bookmark. And we're going to title it as Houston. So now we can go to our bookmarks tab and if we want to zoom into Houston, all we have to do is click this. And the bookmark is added. You can choose this bookmark to automatically navigate to the map extent where the bookmark was created. So let's close the bookmark pane. Now we are ready to explore the city. So Houston has several major flat, low-lying marshes or wetlands that run through the city. So we are trying to find the bayous. So during a hurricane, these bayous are prone to flooding and can become especially dangerous. So we're going to zoom in to the center of the city. You can zoom in by clicking this plus sign and you could zoom out by clicking this minus button or again you can move your mouse pad by um, going in with your mouse pad or out with your mouse pad and again it says here like what I just said you can scroll with up or down with your mouse wheel and it says you can press shift while drawing a box around the area you want to zoom to. So again, 
please follow through the tutorial and look at the tips and tricks so it could be easier for you to navigate the map viewer since we will be working with the map viewer. So we want to see the Buffalo Bayou and this other Braze Bayou, I believe, and we should see it as we move. So to move the screen, just click hold and move the screen around. So again, I do see these two locations, Buffalo Bayou and Braze Bayou right here. So again, it says these bayous bisect the city, crossing several major roads and intersections. When flooded, these bayous can cause serious challenges to infrastructure. So add a bookmark for the current map extent. So we will be repeating our bookmark. So let's go to the bookmarks tab, add bookmark, and we will label this it says by use. Okay, click add. So now we have two bookmarks. Let's close the window pane. And again, we can alternate between two views. This is giving us Houston. And when we click on the by use, it zooms in to the two bayous right here on the eastern part of Houston. So now we're going to be changing the symbology. So especially with your first lab assignment, I would like you to be creative with your symbology style, especially for your final project. But in this case, we are following a tutorial. So I highly recommend though, in the future, in your future final project to um, be creative with your symbology. So to navigate to the symbology tab, it says in the contents, contents toolbar, click layers in the layers tab, verify that the hurricane evacuation roots layer is selected. So this layer is selected. How do we know that? Well, this blue highlight line is shown, which is showing us that it is selected. And I unselect it, and you can tell by that blue highlight line disappearing. So I'm selecting the layer. We have the settings, the light settings toolbar. It's popping up. It's giving us the property of the layer. It gives us the information. And let's minimize the information. And it's giving us symbology and what our legend is for this current map. So it's saying here, you could either access the symbology layer by here, edit layer style, or you can click styles here. So there's two ways to access the symbology style. So the style pane appears. So layers can either have a single symbol or multiple symbols based on attribute information. So currently the roads are being drawn based on their classification, but you're only interested in showing the location of roads. So you'll symbolize the layer with a single symbol. So again, it says there's two options to choose from. We either have types, unique symbols, which is currently selected. We know that because of this blue check mark. But we want location single symbol. We want all the roads to have the same color um, instead of differentiating the different types of roads. We are gonna categorize the roads as a single symbol. So I'm going to check mark that.
so now the map updates to a single symbol like we see here it's a black single line we have black single lines and now we want to edit this symbol style so we're going to click on style options to further edit it and it says here what type of symbology is required for this map so it says in the symbol style pane for color click the edit symbol this is the edit pencil symbol and we will be changing the color code so in the select color pop-up for hex type this code and press enter so again click on this pencil we have a hex code so I am going to copy this code or you can type it in command copy I am using a MacBook and then command B so I put this hex code I'm going to click enter it is updated to this hex code color and I'm going to click done next it says after you choose a color it will update and we want to change the width to three pixels here we have transparency and here's the width so let's change it to three pixels and again this is updated to three the map updates with the thicker blue line symbol for the root so again we see a small preview of it here and it says the roots layer is a feature layer which means it consists of individual features with distinct characteristics so we are done with this let's exit and then let's click done we are done symbolizing the roads and I'll exit here on style so this is what our map has updated to so the symbology of the layer has changed so now in this part of the tutorial I would like you to select a part of the road so it could give you information on that road so I'm just going to click on a piece a line and when you click on it it is highlighted and we see a pop-up about that type of road so we see information we see if it was paved why may stand for yes um, lane category too so again this is known as attribute information and this is found in the attribute table so that was only for one single road but it's very important when you are adding different types of layers to see what is the attribute table to find that you will be clicking the three icons here and you will click show table also known as the attribute table the attribute table will pop up and you can expand it with that and we can see here the column FID is showing us each individual record each individual road road classification is it a state highway interstate highway the road name and it gives us the postal code and if it was paved and all that information so this layer has 31,593 roads um, located in located here the evacuation routes so again we are only zoomed in on Houston Texas but this data set is large we could zoom to the extent of that and we could see the extent of this 
layer is covering the southeast portion of the United States and the northeast portion of the United States. But again, let's go to bookmarks, zoom in on Houston since that's what we're focused on. Okay, so it's very important to look at your attribute table. So add demographic data. So now we're going to be adding another layer by the United States Census Tracts. The United States Census Tracts divide counties into smaller geographic areas, which are useful for revealing spatial patterns. So we will be clicking Layers, and we will, next you will click Add. So we're again, it's defaulted to my content, but we will be using Living Atlas and ArcGIS Online. So for ArcGIS Online, in the search box, type Houston Census Tract Demographics. Or you could copy and paste that. So click Add, since this is the specific layer we want. So let's go back and again we now have added two layers on this map viewer. So again Houston census tract demographics is selected because of this blue line right here. And the hurricane evacuation is selected. But we will be working with this layer and changing the symbology. So again, it's telling us here that the census tracts is labeled, is symbolized with a single color. Here is the legend showing us that the census tracts is colored in light green. So the position of your layers, it matters to see the symbology clearly of each layer. You would want to put the Houston demographic tract underneath or below the hurricane evacuation routes so we could see the, the roads above the census tract. So to do that, you will press hold, click on the Houston Census Tract, and then drag it, keep on holding it, and drag it underneath the hurricane evacuation routes. So now we could see the symbology better. So what we did right now was reorder the layers. So the layers are reordered in the map and the evacuation routes layer is now visible on top of the census tracts. So now we're going to look at the layers attribute table. To do that, you're going to click on the three options and go to show table. So I am going to minimize this for the purpose of this lab. So I'm going to expand, expand it so we could see what's in the attribute table. So each row in the table represents a feature in this case a census tract area. So these individual census tracts are shown here in the attribute table. 
So again, these columns provide different types of information about the census tract features. So it has the tract name, county, state, total population. And to see the whole column name, you can double click or drag it and expand to see the full column name. And we are interested in the total owner renter households from 2013 to 2017. Um, again, you just have to keep on looking at the columns to find it. It looks like it is this one. So I dragged it to see the whole column. Okay, this is what we're trying to find. This shows the total number of households in each track. And it says, if necessary, use the scroll bar at the bottom of the table to scroll to the right and locate the percent of households without a vehicle. So we found the first column, and the second one is percent of households without a vehicle. It could be this one. Um, again, I am ex Expanding it, okay, this is percent of households without a vehicle. This is telling the percentage. So again, to see the full attribute name, resize the column width or point to the header. So, awesome. So, see, I need to do some more reading. So you could either hover over it or... You could hover over it or expand it. So this field shows us the percentage of households in each track that do not own a vehicle. Areas with a high percentage of people who don't own vehicles might need help evacuating. So you'll style, style the layer using the values in this field. So we are interested in this field, so we could see who doesn't have a vehicle and who would need help to evacuate if this gets prone to flooding. So I closed the table and now we're going to make sure our layers tab is selected. Now it is selected, so again you could go to styles and it says here we're going to choose multiple symbols instead of a single style symbol. And we are only want to focus on one field, which was the percentage of Houston that doesn't have a car. So in the styles pane for choose attributes, click field. So click the plus field. And we're only interested in that in two fields actually. So choose percent of households without a vehicle. Here it is, we want this field and click add. So now it's going to update what type of symbology will be great to show percentage of households without a field. So if you scroll down, it'll give you many different options. But based on our tutorial, we are directed for a specific type of symbology. So based on the attribute you chose, in this case, the map redraws to show the color, the counts and amounts color style, counts and amounts color. The colors are based on a color ramp from high to low. You could see this is the color ramp that just updated from high to low. So this style symbolizes each census tract with a different color like we see here, dark blue, light blue, based on households without a vehicle. 
census tracts with the lowest values has a lighter color shade, whereas census tract with the higher value has a darker color shade. It looks like here it wants you to change the color ramp. So let's go, since we want this type of symbology, let's click style options. So let's edit it with filling a different color. The window that appears includes options to change the fill color. So for the fill color, click the current color ramp. In the ramp pop-up, choose blue seven. So we have our options here. And if you hover over it, it will tell you which one's blue seven. So it looks like blue seven is in the third row, second column, blue seven. So we now have the map updated to our new color scheme. Your map should have this type of color ramp. So let's click done. Let's exit, click done. Now, click done again two times to close the style panes. So again, now the layer is styled to show the percentage of households without a vehicle. You'll give it a more descriptive name. So our layer is updated to show this type of field. And we're going to update the name So we're going to click on the options button and choose rename. And we are going to rename it to, for the purpose of this lab, I do just want to copy and paste um, so it could be faster. Okay, click OK. Now our layer is updated to percentage of households without a vehicle. So again, keep this in mind when you are symbolizing a specific attribute field, you want to update your layer's name to show what you have changed it to. So now we're going to save and share the map. So to do this, on the contents, contents toolbar, click save and open which is here and it's, there's a blue circle to remind us to save this map. We're going to click save as. So again, for the purpose of this lab exercise, I will be copying and paste. You can as well, um, or type it out, up to you, but make sure your spaces and you remove the period. So I did work on this lab already. Um, it's saying I already have this available in a folder, so I'll choose a different folder. So it says next you'll add tags. So tags will allow other users to search for your map in ArcGIS Online. So I will be adding, so you could create a new folder by clicking here, or and when you do that, you will enter a new folder name and click the check mark, and that will show on your ArcGIS online account. But I will update it in the practice. Looks like it's already. I will name this folder evacuation folder lab one check mark.
Okay, so our tags, it wants us to do hurricanes, roads, evacuation routes, just, you can either type it and click enter and it'll show up. Again, I would like you to follow this, um, to follow this tutorial to get full points. Let's see if it will separate those. So it didn't. So type it, press enter, type again, it will pop up, press enter, or it will click. Your summary, it's important to write a summary for what your map is about. So other users could understand your map's purpose. So this map shows hurricane evacuation routes in Houston, Texas. Let's click save. It is saving and now it will appear in your accounts content tab. And you can access your content by clicking the options button next to the map's name. So this is the options button. We could go to content and your map will show there. So I, I have a lot of things on my content, but if you click that, you will be seeing this map here, house evacuation map and I went back to it. So now we want to share to our sharing options. Click share map and choose everyone public and click save. Now for your next part of the tutorial, you will be creating a web app. Yeah. <laughs>